Hey guys, it's Kelly. Hey, I got page 13 done. I can't even believe it. And I called it Playtime with designs by Rin Stencils and Stamps. I've been dying to play with these. And it's very, very green. And I'll tell you why here in a second. So how this started is artwork that my son Jason did. He is 10 and he made that sheet in school using marbles and paint. And I fell in love with it. And yes, I got his permission to use it. <laughs> but I loved it. I thought it was so cool. And, you know, by the time I was done, I was disappointed because I can hardly see his artwork. But I do have pages left of it. So I will be using more of that because I just love it. So he just rolled some marbles across paper. How easy is that? He's a mixed media king. So I wanted to use it for my page 13, but I didn't want to mess up the background as much. By the time I was done, you can hardly see it. And that's kind of the story of mixed media sometimes. But, but that's okay because I still had so much fun. So I was using Mod Podge to put it down and I'm sealing it so that it stays because I'm sure that he used water soluble paint and, and it's on like not the best paper. So I wanted to make sure it was sealed in and then I wanted to add some more color to it. So in order to do that, I needed to make it a porous surface again because once I put Mod Podge on, it, on there, it's not gonna hold some of the things I wanna put on there. So I used clear gesso, and for newbies, that is a great thing to have in your stash, clear gesso to put over something so you don't compromise what's in the background. So I'm using my gelatos. I wanted to challenge myself to work with a little bit of green on top of what he had done, because green is not my friend. <laughs> I don't know why, I just struggle with green. So, and that is the Japanese anamami, and, and you know, I can never say that right, I'll have the link. <laughs> it's such a gorgeous stencil. I love it. And Amani, I think. Um, and it's just beautiful. And I thought, you know, I haven't used my modeling paste in a while. And I've been wanting to do that. And I've been wanting to do that with these stencils. And I thought, cool. There's my modeling paste. Yeah, it's all hard. Ugh. Uh, so I had to add water and mix it up and then it got a little gunky but you know I made it work somehow so and I'm just slapping it on there and my idea was to keep them white and um, they just weren't quite white enough for me by the end but there's a lot of fussing in here and a lot of painting but and a lot of sealing something and then making it porous again so this is great for newbies who are like how come I keep making mud with my paint how do I keep things from bleeding and why are things changing after I've, or when I don't want them to? So, hopefully this answers some of those questions. So because my modeling paste was gunky and had some lumps in it, I didn't get the best impression, but you know what? This was playtime and I'm perfectly fine with it. I wasn't going for absolute perfection, I just wanted to play. So I didn't wait long enough for my modeling paste to dry as well as I should have. <laughs> so I kind of messed it up a little bit, but eh, oh well. So I'm using my ink tense pencils, just coloring the stems and um, coloring the little bulbs there and just trying to add depth and dimension to them. And I just wasn't feeling the right green because the green was in the background. I didn't think ahead of time that, oh, your stems are going to be green too. It was more about the white of the flowers. But I thought, you know, I'll just get the shades down there sooner or later. So, and I was just playing, just having a good time with all my colors and, you know, just going with it. So, and I did things a little bit backwards here, but, you know, when you're just creating, you're just doing it. You figure it out as you go. There's no wrong. There's no way to do it wrong. So, and I'm just taking the color directly from my ink tense pencil. I really like that. I, and I really needed that intense green and um, on my stems to have them kind of show up because they were just getting lost in the background. So, and then I decided that I really, really wanted my um, the flowers to be very, very white. So I got some titanium white acrylic paint and I did a couple um, layers of that 
and just filled in the areas of the stencil too. And it kind of took away from the details of it, but you can still tell what kind of flower that is. So I just went with it. I was just coloring and having fun. But I cut out some of that. I did put two quotes of that on, and I cut some of that out for you. But just to recap here on those that have that know what's going on in my crazy life, not that you guys are sitting around going, gee, I wonder what Kelly's doing today. <laughs> you all have your own lives. I get that. But I, I just don't have as much time to do videos. Um, I run a lender services business and I'm short staffed right now. And um, when you're the owner of a business, you can't call in six yourself. And when somebody is several people <laughs> or a couple people are not um, available, then you have to cover for them. So it's been a rough few months, and um, but we'll get through it got some plans and it's just taken a little bit longer than I had hoped so that's how it goes so hopefully I'll have more time to have some creative therapy time here in the future until then I'll do what I can when I can and hope you guys still keep watching so I was just fussing with the green I had some distressed daubers and I had a green and a yellow that I was mixing to get the right colors and then I was trying to add a little bit of depth into the petals of the flowers and just following the the stencil guide. And once I had done that, it was a little too much, so I wound up painting over that. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I didn't like it on the ones where you can see the whole center of the flower, but the other ones I liked it. But so I was just playing with different shades and, you know, it takes a few times to get it right. And then the lines were too, they made it look too cartoony, so I had to take those out and cover it up with the white, titanium white paint again. So I got some of this video going really, really fast, because it really is a lot of kind of small brush detailed painting, because I was just enjoying myself. So that is uh, some more of Rin's stamps. I will have all of the links to stamps uh, and stencils and how you can get those. It's designs by Rin.com. She's got beautiful stamps. I'm just in love with anything that has to do with water with her stamps. I'm just addicted. I can't stay away from them. And these wound up being a little too overpowering for the page, but I don't care. I love them. I used them. <laughs> and I asked my 12 year old, hey, look at my page. What do you think? He goes, you know, you know it's good, it, it, but it's not your best. <laughs> I just adore him for his honesty. And no, it's not my best, but you know what? I had fun. I had a great time doing it, and that's what it's all about. So I stamped it on some tissue paper because it was full of texture, and I wouldn't get a nice image. So I decided to use the tissue paper. Now, after I used the tissue paper, because I wanted those flowers so vibrant and white, and I spent all that time painting them, I just kind of dulled them with this. Um, and there I am using Mod Podge to put my tissue paper down that I stamped those on. So that gives me a nice crisp image. And that's a trick too, and I've told you guys this before, but that's a great trick when you've got a really bumpy background, you know, just stamp it on tissue paper and use some gel medium or some Mod Podge or, or whatever adhesive you'd like and um, whatever liquid adhesive you'd like and put that down and then you got a nice crisp image for you. But the problem with this is that it took away from me um, really wanting that vibrant, just that pop off the page of that white flower. So, but I have a fix for it and you'll see how that works. So, um, just tearing the tissue paper wherever I want it and placing it more Mod Podge. There's like layers upon layers upon layers on this page. It's fun though. It's been so long since I played I just I felt a little off my game but still great therapy. So I'm just placing that where I want it and there's a blank spot in the middle so I just kind of fill that in with loose pieces of tissue paper just so I have consistently consistency across the page because it just doesn't look right when it's not all if you're going to use tissue paper on one section 
in in this one you know it just didn't look right just not to have it all over I just needed it to be more uniform so once that was dry I cut all the excess off then I used my titanium white and a very very tiny detail brush and just added the reflection marks and this time instead of my white gel pen which I usually use I just used titanium white because it was out and then you know it my flowers disappeared in the text in the uh, stamping that I had done on the tissue paper I wanted that nice crisp image and boy I got it and then it took away from my flowers so because I put Mod Podge over it again uh, for newbies I'm using clear gesso and I'm using clear gesso because I want to put titanium white paint on it because I really like how brilliant that white is but in order for my acrylic paint to stick to it because I use Mod Podge I need to put clear gesso on it to give it tooth to hold my paint if I put it on there it wouldn't stay very well so I just slapped on some clear gesso and then I painted it again um, with the titanium white and it still was kind of a little bit too gray for me and then my background for my son's artwork that he did was a little bit more covered up than I would like but you know I got more of that page and I will be using it so I painted the flowers again with the white and then I, I cut a lot of this out because there's a lot of little leaves down there but I wanted to paint them because again that the detail work might seem very tedious for some and yeah it is but I enjoy it it's my downtime and I don't I can turn off my brain about work and what challenges I have outside of this I can turn all that off and just do something pretty and kind of simple if that makes any sense I love it so and that none of those leaves are perfect and I was perfectly fine with the imperfectness of it so I'm using uh, my ink tins pencil and it's that is the color bark It's kind of like brown and I'm just taking some color straight from it and just kind of doing some shadows around the stems and the flowers and I'm just not I'm just willy-nilly in it I'm just slapping it down just to define them a little bit more And I painted them a little bit more because they kind of disappeared with the green paint that I used for the leaves. I just went over it just real roughly. But I've been dying to use that stencil from Rin. And the background wasn't the best to use this on, but I didn't care. It was, it was getting used tonight no matter what happened. <laughs> it's so cool. Thinking fingers. What am I going to do next? So, and I think I decided, what did I do? Oh yeah. So I decided, well, while I think about what to do next, I will do what I usually do and just draw your eye to the center and use my archival ink and ink the edges. Love how that finishes off a page. My foam brush is falling apart. You can see the little pieces falling on my workstation there. And I've warned you guys about this before, but just a reminder, be careful. Those little foam things are full of ink, those little pieces. So whatever you put on top of it is going to have little black specks on it. Might be a cool effect if you really want that, but usually don't. So then I decided I was going to use the Tim Holtz Ideologies little um, letter stamp, little letter stickers. And since this was my fun playtime, and I had re referred to it earlier in the day, saying, you know what, I'm going to make time for some playtime today, I decided to call it playtime. And these little stickers were sticking pretty well, so I didn't have to put any glue underneath them. I usually don't trust them, but these were doing nice. They were doing very nice. I don't use these enough, so. But I really like them. They line up really, like, perfectly. So once I put those down, they needed to be highlighted a little bit like everything else. So I added some shadows around it using that bark pencil again. For this section, I'm a little bit off uh, screen, a little crooked. Didn't realize that because I had zoomed in. 
So, and I just very, very roughly just use some water on my brush and that bark pencil, just taking it directly from the pencil and putting it on. Now these pencils are, they're ink based, they're not like a watercolor pencil, so, and they're archival. So they'll stick to this non-porous surface. The Inktense pencils will, will, but if I use something that was like watercolor, it would just smear all over. I wouldn't attach. It would just fall right off and wipe right off. So there we go. And now I did my initials and the date. Today is April 12th, 2015. And my flowers are still not popping enough, so when in doubt, stickle it. So I'm using some Stardust stickles. Those are my favorite clear stickles. And I'm just real roughly just spreading them over there, not real heavy. It's very, very light. Just add a little bit of sparkle to call more attention to my flowers. That lost their definition in the mix, but that's all right. So there it is. I hope you guys like it. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to check out the links below.